Hello everyone, and welcome to the November 2018 update of the Power BI Desktop. This is a major update for us. It's filled with lots of great features, including some major updates to areas of the product. Of course, we're going to dive right in with the reporting features. The first of which is a feature that's been top of our, it near the top, you know, between one and four usually of our, our ideas site for quite some time, which is expand and collapse in our matrix. So we've been working on this for quite a while. We've had several engineers dedicated to this and we're really excited that we can finally announce that you can now expand individual nodes of your row headers in the matrix. So let me show you how to do that. So I have a matrix here, and in this matrix, you'll see that I have three levels of my hierarchy, category, subcategory, and class. And, you know, as usual, I have my, my expanding and drilling options available to me, including the expand, expand all that moves everything down one level. But if all I wanted to do was expand an individual node, now all I have to do is right click on it, and you'll see that you now have these expand and collapse options available to you including the option to span, expand just the selection. And that will only open that specific node. You'll see here all these others are now, all the other nodes are treated as headers. And this one, just the home appliances is open. I can also, of course, collapse that. I also have the same functionality you would expect from like the, a pivot table in Excel of in, expanding and collapsing entire levels. You can also just expand everything or collapse everything down all the way using the all options that we have available to you and additionally if you instead of wanting to use the right click option you really love those pluses and minuses that you see in pivot tables you can now go into the formatting pane and under the row headers you'll see that you, they, we now have if you scroll to the bottom a plus and minus icons option and you turn that on and you're automatically get some pluses and minuses. And the by default, the formatting of those icons is gonna be map, mapped to whatever your row header text is formatted like, but you can choose to customize that. So if, if I instead want it to be blue, and I wanted them to be a little bit smaller, I can do that. Or if I wanna switch them to purple, my favorite color, again, I can do that. And now they work just like the plus and minus buttons that you're used to, again, in pivot tables. So I can just plus, click the plus and expand that down and then expand television. And then if I wanted to, I can expand computers and projectors and do a comparison between those two. And so I have the full flexibility with these pluses and minuses to just mimic the experience that we all know and love in pivot tables. Make sure to try out this new feature and let us know what you think and if there's any other matrix functionality you're hoping to see in the coming months. The second feature on our list is another feature that has been in the hot and top sections of our user voice site for quite a while. And it's the ability to copy and paste visuals between my PBIX files. You might want to do this if you have a similar model that you're working off of for multiple reports, and you just want to easily save the work that you already did to format your visuals and move them between different PBIX files. And it's, really, it's a really easy feature to use, just like you would expect it to work. You can just select, say, this donut chart and hit Control-C, and then flip over to a different PBIX file like this one and hit Control-V. And you'll notice when I pasted in this uh, donut chart to this older file that I have, the model's the same, so everything just automatically works for me. I have the sales size column and the sales amount exist in this, in this new model, so the visual just works. And the formatting that I manually set, so for example, the title text, the, uh, the, the font family that I was using, which was, I think, Arial Bold, um, I, those stuck, but things like the data colors, which I didn't manually assign, I just let the theme take over. Again, take the theme takes over here. So um, this report is using a different theme, 
it gets different colors applied to it. This is really nice because you, anything that you manually set, you get to save that work. But the things that you want to just naturally match the, the rest of your report that you're moving into the destination report will automatically match. Uh, like I said, it's really important that the model that you are copying and pasting between uh, works or is the same or at least has the same names of the columns, uh, that being the key. Uh, if not, you'll get a very similar experience to what you're seeing if you, um, if you delete a field in your model with that little fix it button. So let me show you what that would look like. If I take this line chart instead, which is relying on a, a date table that I have in my model, that in this model, but I don't have in the other. So if I copy it, control C, flip over and hit control V, you'll see that the visual has the uh, warning that there are fields in this visual that this visual is using that doesn't exist in your model. You can you see in the field list the class and units, which are the same, work just fine. But for these, I can go ahead and remove them and then add in the order date field, which would be the equivalent in this model, and my visual lights up and works. So even if your model's not exactly the same, if it's similar enough, you're able to just copy and paste between the files, uh, save all the work of your formatting, and then just fix up the fields in the field well to make the visual actually start displaying. Do note that this feature only works in the Power BI desktop. You won't be able to copy and paste between the a report in the web and the desktop or vice versa. It has to be between instances of the Power BI desktop. The major updates just keep coming. We also have this month, the third feature on our list, a complete revamp of our filter pane. So the filter pane, as you know it today, hasn't seen a lot of love for quite a while. It doesn't get very many updates. But we have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, talking to a lot of you out there to understand what need you had for the filter pane and also uh, how users were actually consuming your reports. And what we found was that the current filter pane experience just wasn't very good for your consumers to interact with. It didn't feel like part of the report. It was always black and this thing that was always collapsed and no one noticed it was there or wanted to use it because they felt like it was scary, like it might, it might mess something up but they tweaked something in there. And so as a consequence of that, people were using slicers very heavily and they should. I mean, they're, they're a good feature. I'm not saying slicers aren't useful on your report. But a lot of times people were using slicers for things that probably made more sense to go in the filter pane if consumers were, you know, willing to interact with the filter pane. So based off of all the feedback that we got from all of you out there, we have completely revamped our filter pane. It's now part of the report page itself instead of this thing off to the side. It feels and looks like it's part of the report page. You can control the formatting of it, and you also have a bunch of mo bunch more functionality in terms of what's going to be available to your consumer and in what ways and uh, what they can see and what they can't see. So let me show you all the great functionality. So this new filter pane experience is a preview feature. So the first thing you're going to have to do is go into the options dialog and enable it under the preview features that we have here. And it's called the new filter experience. And once you've checked that box and restart the desktop, all of your new reports are automatically going to have this new filter experience. You are going to have to do one more thing for all of your existing reports, which is to go under the report settings option and check this enable filtering experience checkbox. And once you do that, this checkbox doesn't require restart. You are automatically have the filter pane for the existing report that you are viewing. And the reason we do this is because we don't want to mess with any of your existing reports that you have. You know, if we don't want you to turn on a preview feature switch 
to you know to start playing with some new f functionality and see if you like it or not and have it automatically affect a bunch of other reports that your consumers are already using you know you might turn out that you don't like it or you want to wait till it's generally available before exposing it so we just generally as a rule we try not to mess with your existing reports unless we have to and so that's why you have this additional checkbox here so once you check it and hit OK, your current report will also be updated to work with the new filter experience. And the first thing you'll see is that you have this new icon next to the ex existing filter pane under the field well, our old one. And what this does is it lets you show and hide the new filter pane experience. And this state that I'm in right now that you're seeing where I have two filter panes, this new one and the old one, is a temporary state that we're going to be in during the preview period. This new pane that you're seeing, that's going to be what your consumers are seeing. So if you save and you publish this report to the Power BI service, this is the filter pane they're going to see. And the old version of the filter pane, the one that's in the field wells, is now currently acting solely as your filter pane editing experience. It's the editor. This is where you add and remove filters. You can't currently do that in the new pane. You have to add and remove here. And it's where you control some of the functionality I'm going to get into in terms of visibility and, uh, and locking things. So just think of the old one as the editor and the new one is what the consumers are actually going to see and interact with. So there's lots of functionality that you can that is now enabled in the editor of the filter pane that you have access to. So that first button I click, the show and the hide, uh, that's actually going to determine if your filter pane is going to even be visible to your consumers. That's something that we heard from from you that the feedback we've gotten was that sometimes in some reports it just doesn't make sense to even have a filter pane don't waste the space on that bar let me just completely hide it and so you can do that with this show and hide button you also will have new functionality in the within individual filter cards that you have so for example I can choose to completely hide a filter so if I wanted to this uh, category filter not be visible to my consumers. I just click the eyeball. And now you see it's completely gone from that consumption, the, the consumption pane that you have, the actual filter pane. Um, and so this is really useful if sometimes we find that as part of the, in a way, it's you, the filter pane, some filters are actually used as like cleansing in a way. So you need to completely remove some stuff or you completely. Uh, use the filter pane to completely filter out certain values or certain ranges of values that are just, you know, maybe junk data or just not important at all to the report that you're looking at. And so if you're using the filter card, a filter card for that functionality, you, of course you don't want your consumers to even mess with that because if it, you, they do, they're probably... Um, break the report in some way. So if you have a filter that's like that, you can choose to just completely hide it from the users. Additionally, you can just choose to lock or unlock a filter. So by default, they're all unlocked. But you can go in and say, you know what? I want this report to be only about audio, ca cameras, and cell phones. And I don't want anyone to be able to mess with that. That's what this report is about. I think it's important that they know that it's filtered to that. So I'm still going to leave it visible. But I don't want them to change it, so I lock it. And now for any consumer viewing the report, they'll still see the card, they'll see the, the, the values that you picked in the filter pane, but they see this little lock icon and they can't do anything to actually change it. So I'm going to unlock that one and clear it. And then, so that's also the functionality around the filter pane itself, like what's visible, what all the control you have in terms of what's visible and what the users can interact with. There's also additionally a lot of formatting control that you have now for the filter pane. So if I go into the, the formatting pane option, you'll see that there's two new cards, one for the filter pane itself and one for the filter cards. So if I go into the filter pane, I'm able to do things like uh, control the background. And by default, this is what the pane's going to look like. It already kind of feels with the white more part of the canvas. But I can go in and I can make it a light gray if I wanted to and then make that more transparent. Or I could set it back to white so it looks a little nicer. Uh, I can also set the icon colors. So in my case, I like purple. So I'm going to want the icon and text to be purple. 
And you can also have control over this border. So I can choose to, if I want to see the border on the right or not. And also uh, what color I want it to be if it's even there. I also have control over what the cards themselves look like as well in the formatting pane. Uh, you can see that there's actually two modes to the cards. The one is when there's nothing set. And then there's a different look of the filter card when something actually is set. And you can control both of those. You can control the when it's completely available, no filters applied. That will be the available option. And if you want to change what it looks like when it's actually applied, you can switch that in the drop down. And now you'll be formatting that. So uh, maybe in when it's applied, I want it to be a light gray color um, with a little bit of transparency. And I want the border to be on, but I want it to be purple. Um, and I'll leave the available alone in its white state. And so I can com completely control what this filter pane looks like to not only make it nicer for my consumers to use, but just make it feel like, uh, feel like everything feel like it's together and works together. The last piece of functionality you get with this new filter experience is that there's now a new icon for any of the given, all of the different charts on your report. Uh, you'll see that right next to the focus mode button, we have a filter icon. And when you hover over that, you're going to see all of the filters being applied. Uh, this was a common request we also heard. It's really hard uh, when people are viewing your report to know what uh, filters are affecting the data I'm actually seeing. Uh, so now anytime you have that question, all you need to do is hover over the icon and you'll see all the filters applied. And that includes not only the filters from the filter pane, but let's say I cross highlight on medium and I go back over here. I'll see that a, the, through the cross highlighting that sale size is medium is also being applied to this chart. Uh, so it'd be all the filters, the cross highlighting and the slices that are affecting the data in the chart that you're seeing. So hopefully you can see that this is a complete revamp major update of our filter pane please during this preview period please please go and try it out enable it put it on some of your reports and let us know your feedback we want to continue to iterate and improve on this filtering experience for you so uh, go out there turn it on and either comment below or in our our forums our community site let us know what you think and give us your feedback on the new filter pane we also have this month some major updates in terms of report accessibility uh, if you've been paying attention recently, we've been putting a lot of focus and effort on making Power BI reports completely accessible uh, from consuming them to interacting with them to even creating them. We want to make sure that data is accessible to everyone because it's such a powerful tool available to you. Um, so this month, there's lots of updates in terms of reporting. I'm just going to list out some of them pretty quickly. Uh, the first is that there are the selection pane is now completely accessible. Uh, so you're able to open it through the ribbon and then navigate to the pane. Um, and they be able to tab through everything. We have some keyboard shortcuts that you can use to to select and deselect objects. You can multi-select through the through some keyboard shortcuts, move things up and down in the layering, and even toggle between hiding and showing. Um, and you'll find all of those keyboard shortcuts in the blog. Additionally, uh, you it of course is high contrast and fully supports screen readers as well. We've also added keyboard navigation, screen reader support, and high contrast settings to our Q&A Explorer dialog, the Getting Started dialog, the File menu and About dialogs, the warning bar that you can get uh, for if there's something wrong with your report, uh, the file restore dialog that you get whenever you uh, you need to recover a file that may be closed unexpectedly, and also the Franz dialog. All of all of those dialogs are now fully accessible uh, whenever you are creating or consuming Power BI reports. And then lastly, uh, if you have been following what keyboard shortcuts we have available, we have a keyboard shortcut control F6 that lets you jump between parts of the Power BI desktop. Up until now, the only two things you could jump between was the Power BI report 
object, so like the first visual on the Power BI report page that you're viewing, and the page switcher at the bottom. Now that you can jump between all of the visible panes additionally, so you'll still start with the first visual on the canvas in terms of order. Hit Control F6, you move to the pages, but now you can jump to each of the different pages if you continue to hit panes each of the individual panes if you can continue to hit control F6. You'll also be able to jump to the uh, view switcher on the left that lets you switch between the report view, the data, the data view, the modeling view. Uh, you'll be able to jump to the little sign out thing at the top top right. Basically all the different places in your Power BI report you're able to navigate to using control F6. The only exception being the ribbon, which you can use the Alt key to reach just like you can through all the other Office products. Moving on to analytics, we have a major conditional formatting related update this month. Uh, you may know that our most of our visuals supported color saturation, which was a separate bucket in the field where, well where you could drop um, measures to color the, the data in your chart by whereas t the table and matrix visual had conditional formatting, which was a dialogue experience that had a bunch of functionality. Not only could you color by a gradient by a different measure, you could also do rule, you can also do rules, and you also have a color by field option as well. And so we've been constantly upgrading and improving conditional formatting, but that color saturation experience in visuals hasn't gotten much love or any love at all since it was first released. So this month, what we did was that we've upgraded all visuals that used color saturation to now use the same conditional formatting experience that table and matrix have been using. So if I move over to my report and I look at the scatter chart, which was one of the visuals that support color saturation previously, you now see that there is no color saturation bucket in the field well. That bucket is gone. That's because we've now, if you go under data colors, you have this new advanced controls option, which if you've triggered conditional formatting on a table and matrix through the formatting pane, you may have seen this link before. When you pop it, there's a dialogue. Just like the dialog you have for table and matrix, it has all the same functionality. You can base it off of whatever measure you're currently using in the chart. You can pick a different one, like say units. You can change the aggregation of it. You can control not only based off of color scales, but you can switch over to rules and set up actual rules to color your chart by based off of your specific business logic. And you can even use that field value functionality that we had previously enabled for table and matrix as well. So you have all of this great functionality available to you. Like I said, you can pick any measure you want. In my case, let's go with um, net satisfaction and I'm gonna do an average of that. Add in my diverging yellow in the middle and hit okay. And now my visual is colored. And so it has now any visual that previously supported color saturation, which were all the variants of column and bar charts, the funnel chart, bubble and field map, shape map, our preview of shape map, tree maps, and scatter charts. All of those visuals now have the exact same functionality as the table and matrix had with conditional formatting. This is a huge update and it means more power going forward because now whenever we add more functionality to conditional formatting, it's going to automatically apply to all the visuals, not just table and matrix. Make sure to try out this feature and let us know if there's any more conditional formatting features you would like to see us add or if there are any other visuals you like to see enabled for conditional formatting. Our second update in under analytics this month is a extension to our Q&A Explorer feature, which is the ability to ask related questions. If you don't recall what the Q&A Explorer is, it's this button that you can add to your report as an author, and when your consumers click on it, they'll get this dialogue experience where they can ask whatever questions they want of Q&A, similar to the full screen experience that you have for dashboards in Q&A. 
Additionally, as the report author, you can precede some questions by asking them here and clicking the add this question button, which will add the questions to the left. And the, your consumers will be able to use those as starting points for their questions. This month's, month's update is this new Ask a Related Question button. Whenever a user is consuming your report, if they ask one question, they can then ask a follow-up type question by clicking on this button. And any further question that they ask has the con filter context from the previous question. So let me uh, give you an example. For example, I can ask Contoso products. And now I just get by Q&A, automatically a list of all products sold by Contoso. Now if I want to know what the sales amount for those products were, I can ask a related question and type those products, so the products I was looking at, by sales. And now this question, this Q&A result actually is filtered to just products from Contoso. So you can see in the restatement we are in fact showing you Contoso sorted by the total sales amount. And um, if you actually scroll in the dialogue, you'll be able to see the history of your questions as well. So if you continue to expand and ask more related questions, you can always scroll to see the history. You can ask a lot of different types of questions. And I can just continue to have a conversation with Q&A at this point, continuing to ask related questions and follow up questions. So for example, I can ask if I wanted to instead see them for for a datum instead. Now the same answer is returned to me, but instead where brand name is a datum instead of Contoso. And so you can see I can continue to just, at this point I'm just conversing with q and I'm asking questions, Q&A remembers what my questions were, and I can continue to just extend those questions and change them up. There are a lot of things you can do through this related questions uh, experience. You can add new fields, so I can include brand name or include units sold or things like that. I can extend filters, so I can say not only for Fabricom, but also for Contoso as well and see both. I can um, add new filters, so I can say what about for 2015 specifically. Or I can even, re as you saw, I can replace them. So I can say, show Contoso instead, or what about Contoso? And so through this related questions feature, you like the, the uh, feeling when using Q&A should just be much better. You could actually feel like you were, I said this several times already, but just repeating it, you really are just talking with Q&A. And it's a really nice experience for, for your consumers. Moving on to the modeling features, we have as our first feature, another area of the product that's been completely revamped. We have a preview of a new modeling view. This new modeling view is a preview, so again, you'll have to go under the options dialog and check the box that says under preview features, modeling view. And when you do that, you'll see that you have two icons now under what under the the normal report and data view. You have your old relationship view, which you you know, and then you have this new one that has a little star next to it, and that little star indicates it's the new version of the modeling view. And this modeling view is amazing. It is much more performant, can handle many, many more tables, you know, hundreds of table models. My model is kind of boring. It only has, you know, uh, seven tables in it. Not, not as exciting, but like I said, you could have you know, dem you, you could easily manage a, a hundreds of table model right here in Power BI Desktop with this new view. And part of the greatness of this new view is if you do have those models where you have hundreds and hundreds of tables, you can actually create different views of your layout. So, you know, you have your all table view, which has your entire model that your report is based off of, but you can also create uh, different views that focus in on just parts of your model that might be geared towards specific tasks. So in my case, I created this simple view that only has the two tables that I'm using specifically in this report. I'm only using these two, so that's my simple view. You could easily just create a new layout. Uh, clicking auto arrange will put all the tables on there for you. And then you can go in and you can remove from this diagram view to hide them. 
You can also create a new view just by dragging in table. So I want that. Just the categories table, I can drag it in here. And then I continue to drag in other tables as well. And if I only wanted, if I wanted to focus in just on categories and order details, but add all the related tables, I can do that as well by right clicking and clicking and saying add related tables and I can continue to use this drag and drop functionality, this hiding and this related table functionality to create versions of my layout that are geared towards specific tasks within my model. This new modeling view also has a, a lot more functionality in terms of just like being able to do way more modeling exercises here. So let me go back to my all tables view and I'll click on my sales table. You'll see that there is a bunch of properties I can set in this pane right here. I can rename it. I can change its storage mode. I can hide it and unhide it. And if I click on some fields, you'll see that I can also um, do a lot more here as well. I can pick sort by columns, data categories, descriptions, every property that I could set in my model, I can do it right here in this pane. Not only that, but I can actually set I can actually uh, set the properties for multiple fields at once. So if I multi-select on unit and unit price and unit cost, my properties pane is filtered to all of the properties that are that are shared by those three and I can set them all at once. So if I wanted to say that um, in this case I wanted for whatever reasons all of these fields to be summarized by default to just account, I can set that. I can even add them all to a display folder. That's another new feature for this month. I can um, now create display folders in my models. We've been able to consume them for quite a while from an AS model, but you haven't been able to create them in Power BI. Now I can say this is my units folder, and I want all of those fields to be underneath it automatically. You can see I've created some other folders as well, like the products folder. Um, and I've done all of that just in this modeling view. And of course, whenever I go into the reporting view, I'm able to see it, those different fields in that table in the folders. And so I'm able to not only use this new modeling view to help me manage my model better, I can also create folders so that whenever people are creating reports off of my model as well, it's a lot easier for them to manage it and find what they are looking for in these massive models that a lot of you are working with. Again, this new modeling view is just a preview. Uh, so please try it out, uh, enable it, you start using it in some of your reports, and let us know what other functionality you'd like to see enabled within this modeling view. Next on the list is that composite models are now generally available. Uh, composite models was one of the most exciting model related features we've had in quite a while. It's the ability for you to be able to, to mix in one model both direct query sources and uh, import sources all in one model. And we are, we, it's been preview for a few months and we've been continuous, continuing to iterate on it based off of your feedback, but we're very excited that we're now making it generally available to, for everyone to use. Uh, so if you've been holding back using it because it was a preview feature, hold back no more. Start using this feature to just make your model so much better and so much cooler in my mind. Um, also, with this making this feature generally available, we are in, adding it, one more change to it as well. Uh, we now allow relationships that are different between bet that are between different sources to have a cardinality of many to one to reflect the actual cardinality of the data. While the relationships may still have the same weak kind of behavior as relationships that have a cardinality of many to many, uh, allowing the true cardinality to be defined allows additional optimizations and also just a cleaner model. Continuing on our accessibility improvements, we also have some modeling related accessibility improvements as well. Uh, the manage relationships dialog, the edit relationships dialog, and the manage roles dialog for RLS all are now completely accessible. That means keyboard navigation is supported, you're able to use a screen re reader with it, and high contrast settings are applied to these dialogs as well. Uh, between this and the reporting update we had earlier in the video, 
uh, we have a massive improvement in terms of accessibility with the product, and we're almost there in terms of being fully accessible. Uh, we'll have another major update next month as well. We also have three new DAX functions this month. Uh, in support of our new Expand Collapse feature that I demoed earlier for the matrix visual, we now have an additional optional drill down filter argument for the roll up as is subtotal function and a new non visual function. Additionally, we added an is in scope function, which is a better way to detect hierarchy level in a measure expression. Some popular tasks you might need this for include either calculating child percentage of parent subtotals or calculating ranks of children under different parents. Five new custom visuals have also been released in this past month. The first one we're going to talk about is Calendar by MAQ Software. So the calendar visual is what it sounds like. It's a calendar that you can have as part of your Power BI report. You can have a bunch of events listed on the calendar. It You give them each of the events a start date and an end date and time. And um, you can color code them by grouping the events together. So in this case, the product launch is the main event, and so that's a green color, whereas other important events are given a grayish color. You can also show a bunch of information on the tooltips as well. So in this case, in this calendar, when I hover over the internal shareholders meeting, I not only see the start and end date and time, I also see the group, a description of the meeting, who organized it, the, the organizer's details, and the location as well. Uh, there's lots of formatting capabilities available for this custom visual. You can, for example, set that you want the week to start on Sunday. You can control if you see this navigation between month, week, day, and list. You can also set your work hours as well as the work week so you can color code the calendar better. And of course you also have the standard formatting capabilities that you always have for a Power BI visual including the data colors, the header, things like that. Uh, so this is a really useful custom visual if you are using a Power BI report to do a lot of management tasks. You can have not only all the information, for example, about the current state of your project and all the different um, deadlines and goals for the products and all, and all the timelines and where, where you guys are compared to those timelines. You can actually just show a calendar as well there listing out all of your important events. The second visual is a is called Ratings by MAQ Software. And this is all around being able to show some kind of like indicator of the current rating of something. So you can think like three out of five stars for a movie or this custom visual is four out of five stars or whatever situation you have where everything where things have like a rating applied to them, you can now visualize it with this custom visual. So in this example, they they have four different ratings. You can see that um, the this is the rating for the employees in a development department, and there are three and a half stars filled. So you're able to format not only the um, the indicator that you use, you can format it by the color. It fills it partially for all the different shapes of it. You have a decimal value. And so this is just a very simple visual. You even have some formatting options available. It has a nice animation when it comes in. You can see how many stars are possible by setting the max. You can even have a gradient applied as well to the, the indicators. And you can even have borders and things like that. So lots of, it's a simple visual for a simple task of ratings, but it does have a lot of formatting capability. So you should be able to make it look the way that you want to match the style of your report. The third custom visual is Hourglass Chart by MAQ Software. And this is all around being able to show conversion rates effectively. So you have a triangle that's showing you the percent for, um, for whatever you're trying to visualize. In this case, the, per the percent of your flights that are being delayed compared to scheduled. So you can see um, Airport C has a lot of flights, but not as many being delayed. And then there's some kind of event that happens, and then you can see the results underneath it as well. So 
if you, for example, were visualizing something from your uh, site and then you change something about your website and you want to see how that impacted your visitors, you could use this visual to see the before and the after in this triangle layout and also the conversion rate in between. Again, there is some functionality in term, uh, formatting functionality as well. You can change the, the layout from horizontal to vertical. You can show or hide this conversion box in the center. Uh, all the, the formatting capabilities you would expect to see in a custom visual. The fourth custom visual on our list is forecast using multiple models by MAQ software. And this, this one is actually an R custom visual. And it's, all, it's one visual that you can use to, f to forecast your data using four different types of models. Um, so you can see this one is currently using uh, the neural networks algorithm, but I could also switch it to linear regression, exponential smoothing, or the ARIMA algorithm through the forecasting settings card in the formatting pane. I also have a bunch of other functionality in here. I can say how many units I want to forecast by, the split point, turn on or off confidence intervals, uh, the lambda setting. Um, I can also either just allow the model to be tuned automatically or I can manually tune it as well. And there's, a of course, lots of other formatting capabilities as well. There's some plot settings like the coloring and stuff like that. Some settings over my X and Y axis and then the standard Power BI formatting. And this is a really useful visual if you are, it's really caring about, of course we have forecasting integrated into our default line chart, but if you need to go beyond that, like it's really important, you need, you are more of an advanced user, uh, you need to go beyond the standard forecasting that we have, you can use this custom visual to try out all the different forecasting methods and compare the results. You can see the, the error range and stuff like that. So if it's really important to you to be able to, to try out all these different forecasting methods, make sure to try out this R custom visual. The last custom visual is the pie charts tree. And this visual is a tree visual that you can set up. And this one has all that you're looking at now has all the different functionality on it all at once, but you can kind of pick what, how, what you use and what you don't. So the, the base of it is that you need to have uh, a hierarchy in your categories bucket. As soon as you have that, you'll be able to have the tree structure available to you. You can also add in a values uh, field so that would be some measure that each of these is being each of these has represented so that that would at that point you would have a data label along the dots of your tree and then you can also add a target and at that point that's when the pie chart shows up you'll be able to see uh, how far you are compared to your target value through the pie chart and then you can also add a progress state as well through the progress. And when you add that, you see this uh, progress indicator at the top right. And you'll, the pie charts will then indicate if you're ahead or behind with the green or the red, depending on how, how far progress has been made at that point. So like, I'll just remove that real quick so you can see it without it. You can see through, through uh, just the sales and the target, you can see the percentage that you are ahead. But once you add that progress in, you also get that color coding to let you know if you're ahead or behind. You can also, through the formatting pane, control some of the functionality of the tree as well. Um, you can control things like colors and stuff like that. You can choose, you can see it was auto expanding as they made changes, but you can turn that off and then allow your user to click to expand the node that they are interested in. This is really useful for comparisons. Um, you can also choose so that you can see this weighted line. So you can see most people went from England to London instead of England to Manchester. But you could turn that off as well so that it's just l straight lines going through. Um, so lots of functionality of this as well. I know a lot of people are really interested in having a tree visual in their report to show, um, you know, how things are broken down across multiple categories. So this is a really useful visual for that purpose. So make sure to download it from AtSource and give it a try. Our last uh, section for this month is data connectivity. And we have three updates here. The first is that we have a new 
connector called Azure DevOps Server. This connector allows you to import and transform your data from Azure DevOps Server to build Power BI reports on top of it. And you'll be able to find this connector under the online services category within the Get Data dialog. We also have an update for our PDF connector. This month, we're allowing you to also specify start and end pages as optional parameters. And this will restrict Power Query to only explore a given range of pages when discovering tables. You'll be able to specify the parameters in the in formula generated after connecting to a PDF connector. Uh, and I, you'll see an example down on the screen right now. I'm not going to read it out, but you'll be able to see it there. And then lastly, we have improved our Azure Consumption Insights Connector as well. It, it now allows you to connect to budget and reserved instances data as well. That's all for our November release of the Power BI desktop. Make sure to try out all these great features and leave us any feedback or questions you have in the comments below. Thank you.